Now, as discussed in our previous Malware of the Day report, there has been a proliferation in the use of simpler open source command and control frameworks, including remote access Trojans or RATs in recent years. One RAT in particular has been prominent over the last few months, Xenorat. Here, for example, is a tweet from a noted malware analyst highlighting the increased sightings of Xenorat in real-world applications. So in today's Malware of the Day investigation, we'll explore a Xenorat compromise, including a chain of infections similar to those reported by other parties recently. Xenorat is another open-source C-sharp rat freely available on GitHub, and although its codebase is relatively simple compared to, for example, commercial C2 frameworks, it does feature a whole swath of advanced features. So in this case study, we'll learn how to identify a typical Xenorat network connection using AC Hunter, as well as use Beaker to correlate the local processes responsible for mediating said connection. We'll also see how we can use other freely available tools, such as PE Studio and Typeref Hasher, to support our base findings and potentially fingerprint the exact malware involved. We'll also introduce the concept of robust versus brittle detections and explore why one has to build a successful threat hunting program based on the former. We hope that by showing how such compromise might appear in AC Hunter Beaker, along with support from other free detection tools, we can help keep your organization safe against it. The local corporate network has a single subnet at 192.168.20/24, containing nine different workstations: 192.168.277, 79, 82, 84, 85, 87, 88, 89, and 90. And these are all running Windows 10. A local dedicated Zeek sensor at 192.168.219 is running Ubuntu 20.04 and it pushes hourly logs to a cloud-based AC Hunter server located at 64.23.195.234. The server also runs Ubuntu 20.04. Now the same cloud server also runs Beaker, allowing us deeper insight into the network traffic. So in today's scenario, a threat actor at 172208.5175 successfully compromised one of the corporate workstations at 192.168.277 via a chain of infection similar to those reported by other organizations within the last few months. The user of this station unfortunately downloaded an attachment from a sender impersonating a potential supplier. While the attachment masqueraded as an image file, it was actually a shortcut file, that is .lnk. Now shortcut files actually serve as a convenient malware vector since it is both adept at avoiding detection and functions as a de facto downloader by executing commands via the Windows command shell. So once the user ran the payload, it downloaded and installed the rat stub onto the local system and established a reverse TCP connection over port 444 to a cloud VM running the Xenorat server at 172.208.5175. During routine monitoring with AC Hunter, we systematically reviewed all the local hosts important modules from our dashboard. Though our victim, 192.168.277, did not feature near the top of the list, it's important to understand that the designated threat score serves to assist with triage, and it is still critical to manually review all systems if and when possible. Upon landing on the long connections module, we noticed four long connections, that is longer than five hours, that were either alive or had been alive within the past 24 hours. Since the bottom connection lasted only 5.5 hours in total and is currently closed, we decided to skip that for now, knowing of course that we can always come back later and dig deeper if need be. We then perform a reputation check on the third longest module by clicking on it and selecting from the various external reputation databases AC Hunter provides. After reviewing several of these, we are provisionally satisfied that this is a genuine Microsoft server used for the collection of telemetry. We immediately recognize the second longest connection to our own server at 64.23.195.234, where the Elastic server is listening on port 9200. Since we determined this is legitimate traffic to a known resource, we proceeded to add it to our safe list by clicking on the icon to the right of total duration, thereby ensuring it will no longer appear in future threat hunting sessions. 
The longest connection, totaling over 45 hours at the moment of review, is a little more perplexing than the others. As we can see here in the top right, the domain also belongs to Microsoft. However, running reputation checks on it essentially leads to the digital equivalent of blank stares. All the sites report that this specific IP has never been seen or reported. Now this can seem like a good thing, and perhaps it is. But it's also possible that it simply means this IP belongs to a new cloud instance. Possibly a VM running on the Azure network since it belongs to Microsoft. Now as we've mentioned before, threat actors love using these because they have a good reputation and can essentially be treated like a disposable commodity. We also noticed in our AC Hunter Long Connections module that the connection is to an unusual port, 4444. We searched for any potential applications or malware associated with this port on Google. The overall results are inconsistent and do not provide an immediately satisfying answer. It's for this reason that we decide for now, instead of digging deeper into search results beyond the first page, to consult Beaker and see what specific host process is mediating this connection. So after logging into our Elastic portal at 6423195234 port 5601, we select our Sysmon dataset, as it is the Sysmon logs from the corporate workstation that Beaker uses as input data. We can now use KQL syntax to specify the exact data we are looking for. Knowing the destination IP and port, we search using the following query, destination.ip 172208.5175, and destination.port 4444. Now the search immediately shows the connection in question. And we can now see the specific process responsible for mediating this connection, which raises a few concerns. First, the name of the process, resumebuilder.exe, is not familiar, nor is it known to have any specific use case on these corporate workstations. It is thus unclear why a long connection of more than 40 hours to an external server over an unusual port is being made by this process. Secondly, and perhaps even more concerning, is the exact location of this process. See Windows Temp. Now it's concerning because not only is this an exceedingly unusual installation directory for legitimate software, but it is also known to be a go-to installation directory for malware due to the typically lax write permissions associated with it. By utilizing Beaker and integrating the information it provides with data from AC Hunter, we now have strong evidence suggesting a potential compromise. At this stage, our primary threat hunting tools have provided sufficient reason to notify the incident response team for further investigation. Following the strict guidelines and instructions from the incident response team, since we are now under their jurisdiction, we will conduct some basic static analyses to gather more insights. We'll now perform some basic static analysis on the executable using an excellent tool called PE Studio. Now, while PE Studio offers a paid version, it also provides a free version which is sufficient for our needs. Please see the link in the description below to download it. We can now open PE Studio with administrative privileges and load resumebuilder.exe. The application usually takes a few moments, approximately 10 to 30 seconds, to load all the results, after which we can proceed. In the left-hand side column, we select the Footprints module, which gives us an overview of some of the most important hash signatures associated with the file. We first check the SHA-256 hash value by simply clicking on the value, which will take us directly to the VirusTotal search results page. Now, unfortunately, no match is found. It is, however, extremely common to not get a match on the SHA-256 hash since it is considered a very bristle detection method, meaning a match is only made based on very specific criteria and if even the smallest detail changes, the detection will fail. Of course, with most cryptographic hashes, a change in only a single byte will produce a different result, meaning it is very easily foiled by threat actors. It is thus preferable to use, to the extent available, more robust detection methods. Now, unlike brittle detections, robust detections are more flexible, meaning there is a shift away from specific details and a greater emphasis on behavior. 
Thus, even if some details change, for example a few bytes, the detection may still be effective since it focuses on patterns not specific. On this very note, we can for example use an imp hash, since it is derived not from the full sequence of specific bytes, but rather from the specific module imports. Thus, even if a malware author for example changes the names of functions and variables, the imp hash will remain the same as long as the exact same modules are imported in the same order. However, clicking on it also produces no hits in VirusTotal. And if we look at other databases, we get a variety of inconsistent results. For example, MalwareBazaar reports it as being the Redline Stealer malware. To understand why this might be the case, let's head to the Indicators module in PE Studio. Now, as we can see here, PE Studio reports the file signature as Microsoft.net. Now, without delving too deeply, because of the pronounced module homogeneity of .NET based applications, we cannot use Impash reliably for this kind of malware. Instead, we can use a unique and innovative technique called TypeRef hash for .NET malware samples. Now, I've left a link in the description containing more details for interested readers. But in practical terms, we can simply download the TypeRef hasher binary from GitHub and run it against resumebuilder.exe to obtain it. Since TypeRef hashing is still an emerging indicator, a search for this does not produce many results. However, the top result on Google indicates that this same TypeRef hash has been identified in reference to Xenorat. Now back in PE Studio, we can all but confirm that the malware is indeed Xenorat by navigating to the strings module, by sorting the value column alphabetically, and here we can see a number of strings in the malware containing the specific terms Xeno and Rat. At this point, we can feel confident that we have discovered a compromise thanks to AC Hunter and Beaker. AC Hunter indicated an unusually long connection to the unusual port 4444, associated with an IP possibly belonging to an Azure Cloud VM. Beaker, on the other hand, showed us the process responsible for mediating this connection as being both unknown and located in an unusual directory. And then by using other free software, specifically PE Studio and TypeRef Hasher, we not only confirmed this, but also discovered the most likely malware involved, Xenorat. So along with helping to confirm what we learned with AC Hunter and Beaker with greater conviction, these additional details may be valuable to the response team as they kick off their remediation efforts. So before concluding this case study, we'd once again like to emphasize the importance of understanding the difference between robust and brittle detections. Although brittle detections such as signature hashes and analyzing PE file strings certainly have their place, we cannot ultimately rely on them. This is because they depend on specific details and it only requires a crack crafty malware author to deviate it from the expected patterns in order to render them ineffective. It's for this reason we always recommend building any solid detection or threat hunting program using robust detections such as AC Hunter and Beaker. These tools do not rely on specific details, they detect TTPs or specific patterns of behavior. Now, in line with frameworks such as David Bianco's Pyramid of Pain, it is incredibly difficult for threat actors to alter these behaviors. And thus, even if all the details change, you can rest assured that AC Hunter will still be able to detect and alert us to the presence of a compromise. And so that's it for today's case. You can refer to the link right at the top of the description, which will take you to our website where you can download the PCAPs and ZCLOGs to follow along. We invite you to do so to really help solidify your knowledge and understanding of this specific malware. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Until next time, keep well.